There's a reason you clicked on a video with the title, you aren't cold calling enough, and it's because you know it's true. Hi everyone, my name is Ian Ross. I'm the owner and CEO of Velocity Estates, and I'm gonna tell you why you are not putting in enough activity to generate new business, especially if you're growing that business. Now, let me explain what I mean. If your business is set up entirely around outbound calls and you have 50 full-time employees, each dialing you know, 10 numbers at a time when sitting on a dialer, you might say to me, we can't possibly cold call anymore. We're, we're burning through the data as it is. There's no new numbers to call. Then you already know you aren't calling enough because you've determined that 50 employees dialing 2,000 hours a week is already worth the expense. It's already worth the cost. In that case, the principle that more activity gets more results is already a big part of how you think about operations. So you can leave. You already got to this point in the video and you agree with me so far. You are free to go. Goodbye. Now for the rest of you, look, I understand the reason why you or an employee or even your entire industry wouldn't be served by outbound calls. In fact, you can have a dozen different reasons and I'm not saying one of them or even all of them aren't valid to a certain degree. Maybe you're a freelancer with one client at a time. Maybe your sales cycle is six months long for a product you have to craft meticulously by hand. Or maybe, and this would be the biggest mistake of all, you don't believe there is any way your product or service could benefit from speaking to a stranger on the phone. These are the very entrepreneurs and business people that I wanna to speak to right now. If you are thinking that only one call closed, telesales companies are the ones that can generate revenue from calling strangers on the phone, then you need to totally rethink your approach to the telephone. Despite what you may believe or even do yourself, people are actually answering the phone when a stranger calls. The very fact that many people prefer to text rather than talk to a stranger on the phone is why the cold call has reached a whole new level of effectiveness. Whether you're calling someone's personal cell and be respectful when you do that, or dialing the front desk of a motel, verbally interacting with a stranger creates the opportunity to build more rapport, earn more respect, and gather way more information than you ever would from a cold email. Now stop for a second, lean back, and let me paint you a picture. Let's take a specific scenario, a situation that demands cold calls, even though you don't expect it to, and apply this principle. As I break down this example, really think about how this is actually about you right now. Here we go. You are an up and coming musician in the suburbs outside of Chicago. Let's say you're an acoustic singer songwriter who specializes in fado, a traditional type of Portuguese folk music. Now, since your style of music is a little less common in Illinois, you think your only chance of performing live and let's be honest, making any money is to perform in the one or two bars that occasionally have fado music. So you search on Google or hop on LinkedIn to find the email address of the bar, which is usually something like info at bar that occasionally plays fotomusic.com. You send them a link to your Facebook page with 200 followers, or maybe a link to your Instagram that has clips of you strumming the Portuguese guitar in your bedroom. You write in your email that you're the best Fado singer songwriter this side of the Iberian Peninsula and that they should definitely hire you to play in their bar. Now just cross your fingers and hope for the best. Maybe you will hear back in a month, Maybe not. This was the completely wrong approach, and I'll tell you why. Sure, you spent all this time on the six different drafts of the email, and when you send it off, you then realize you had a typo right at the end. Now you waste the time, you're a little stressed, and most importantly, you'll never hear back anyway. I know this is a really specific example, but if you can't do the intellectual work to extrapolate and figure out how this applies to your business, then I don't know what to tell you. Here's what you, the Illinois-based photo singer, should have done. You use Google to get a list of any of the smaller bars within an hour drive. You prepare a brief pitch about what type of music you play, who you are, and why you would be great to be hired by that business. It only takes 10 minutes to look through the bar's old schedule and to figure out a comparable artist that played there recently. Now you call that bar right at the hours they open. You tell whoever answers the phone that you have a question about a booking the following month and you need to speak to the owner. You say, I've already got the email for info at smallbar.com. I need to actually speak to someone. Either you are handed off to the right person, you get a different number to call, or you get a time to call back and the name of the person you need to speak to then. Once you've got the needed party on the phone, you give them the pitch about you, your music, and why you think their bar or restaurant will benefit. And then you ask, does that sound like something you'd be interested in? If they say no, then it's oh. a no, and you move on. Maybe your pride is taking a little bump on the head, but the end results of your effort will be worth it. If they say yes, you get the personal email address of the bar owner or broker, and you send that same email with the links to your Instagram and Facebook from before, with the same typo at the end, because let's be honest, you're a musician, not a copy editor. 
and you will actually get a real response from an interested party and you have an actual chance of booking that gig. Rinse and repeat for every live music bar or restaurant in that hour's drive and you will have a heck of a lot more success than you would have ever had from those cold emails before. Now, since the elaborate scenario is complete, you better have found a way to apply this to your growing business. And if not, well, you can always pick up the Portuguese guitar and follow my advice anyway. So what does this all mean? It means you are not cold calling enough. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and all that jazz. There's a lot more to come.